In this tutorial we take an extensive look at layers. Now layers are a really useful way that we can manage our 2D data. First we'll start by taking a quick look at a slideshow where we'll discuss the concepts and issues associated with layers before we then move into a software demonstration to show how we can use and control them in practice. So really one of the first questions is what are layers? Now layers are a great way for us to help organize our 2D data when creating a design in the software. In terms of the data that we can manage on those layers that extends to vectors, bitmaps that we might import, dimensions that we might create mid-process we can specify the layer onto which those are created and similarly with 3D models there is an associated grayscale image which is also goes on a relevant layer. So what are the main uses for layers? In essence they're to make our design easier Layers can be hidden to simplify the working data that's presented on the screen. They can be assigned a color to help differentiate between different groups of vectors. And be easily selected, and that can be automatically done from a menu. And also we can give that layer a specific name to help us organize our objects. Now toolpaths can be associated with a layer using the vector selector to automatically make some machining tasks across similar parts much easier. For instance, in the process of cabinet making, where we might want to group vectors onto different levels and then automatically through the toolpath creation be able to pick those layers to create toolpaths automatically. Now let's take a look at some facts regarding layers. Firstly, an object can only be on one layer at any specific moment. It cannot be shared between two different layers. When you create a new object, it will all be automatically placed on the current active layer. And when editing an, option, editing an object, it will not change its layer unless the operation creates a new object which is placed onto the active layer. For instance, if we have uh, an object selected on a non-active layer and decide to offset that vector, thereby creating a new copy, that new copy will be placed onto the active layer and not the original. And to note that 2D toolpath previews are not assigned to a layer, but of course the visibility can be toggled using the checkbox next to the toolpath name. So how are layers created? There's a number of different ways. Firstly, we can add a new layer from the menu. When we move or copy items, we have the option to add them to an existing layer or to create a new layer. When we import an image, a new bitmap layer, uh, layer will be automatically created and that image placed onto it. When we import a vector file, for instance a DWG, DXF or SKP file, which has layers within that file, then those layers will be recreated upon import into the software. And for those importing a PDF, a separate layer will be created for each page within the PDF document. An EPS or AA file which do not have layer information then as essentially a single layer will be created with the same name as the imported file. Um, of course when we're creating dimensions we have the option to create a new layer and place those dimensions onto that layer. And in plate production an Aspire's create zero plane and the slicing function when dividing up a 3D model then similarly new layers are created during those processes too. Now with all this functionality within layers we ought to take a look at how we might use them. So what is the best way to use them? In essence there is no right or wrong way to use layers but to utilize them to suit your app particular application and the way that you like to keep your work organized. And do you have to use layers? Of course the answer is no but you'll find even for the simplest of projects, you'll often benefit from using them and keeping your 2D data organized. And throughout many of the tutorials, you'll see layers being used extensively in different ways to help us stay organized and save time. So now we've moved into the software and we're initially gonna take a look at how we can access the layers. I'm gonna start by creating a new file, 12 by 12 by an inch, on my XY datum in the center. And layers can be accessed in a number of different ways. Firstly, we can access it from the top menu. So I can simply click with the left mouse key to bring up the small form 
here I can now access different information such as being able to switch the visibility of the layer on and off, be able to change the color of the particular items on that layer, to check whether there are vectors on that layer, to be able to rename and all this information can also be accessed from clicking with the left mouse key on the button at the end there. Similarly you can also see that we can add a new layer from the bottom of this menu but now I'm just going to move away from here and we're going to look at another way where we can access the layers. I'm going to move down to the bottom left hand corner now and you can see that we have two tabs uh, because we're running cut 2D here which is drawing and layers. If I click on to layers you'll see I have very much the similar information that we saw when accessing the layer information from the top toolbar. Two key additions to working with the layers tab is the ability to reposition layers up and down the list using the up and down arrows at the top and similarly at the bottom we've got an, the ability to manage sheets particularly if you're importing a large number of parts and nesting them onto different sheets then you'll need to possibly change which active sheet you're working with. Now there is one final way we can access layers, so I'm just going to navigate away from the Layers tab and we can use a keyboard shortcut. So using Ctrl L, which I'll press now, that will immediately flip us into the Layers tab ready for us to start creating a new layer. So let's start looking at the ways we can use and manipulate layers. One of the first things people like to do is of course rename a layer. We can do that by just clicking into that and calling that new layer. Another way that we can do that is to right mouse key off there and go rename and okay, say border. Or you can do this from the menu on the right hand side. So just using the left mouse key, click on that icon. That'll bring up the same menu we saw off the right mouse key and go to rename. And I'm actually going to give this a more specific name, border vectors, because we're just about to start creating some geometry on this particular layer. Before we create any geometry, let's take a look at the single layer that we do have. As we only have one layer that is currently active as shown by the bold text, it's currently any items on there are visible as shown by the yellow light bulb. Any geometry that I will create will be black. There's currently no geometry on this particular layer as denoted by the clear blank page next to the text. So we'll come back to the drawing tab, come into the draw rectangle command, and create a simple 10 by 10 square centered over the workpiece. Now if I close that down and come back to the layers tab you can see that the blank page next to the text now has some geometry displayed on it denoting the fact that we definitely have geometry on this particular layer. If I move back now into the visibility light bulb I can switch that off and back on but notice that when I do switch it off the text is shown in red. This is denoting the fact that the active layer is currently switched off. So now, as if I come back to the drawing tab and create any further geometry, as soon as I actually finish creating that geometry, notice that it switched all the other geometry on that active layer back on. And if I go back to the layers tab, you can instantly see that it has switched that layer back on in order for me to be able to see the geometry that I have created. So I'm just going to delete out now that circle and we're going to look at creating another layer. Now there are a number of different ways we can do it. If we want the new layer to be below then I can create add new layer. Okay, but I'm going to delete out that layer. Or if I select it and click right mouse key over the name and go insert new layer. Or similarly from the icon next to the current layer I can right mouse key insert new layer and in both of those cases the layer will be created above the previous level or layer. So this one's going to be called star and I'm, it's, I'm currently made it active as you can see there in bold if I select the border vectors that one's now active but I want my star to be active so I select it with the left mouse key which shows in bold back to the drawing tab and I'm going to begin, begin creating some geometry on that star layer. In this case I'm going to create some star geometry it's going to have five points, an outer radius of three, inner radius percentage 38, and it's going to be centered on the workpiece. If I close that down now, we can come back to the layers and just have a little bit of an understanding of what we can see. In both cases, you can see both layers have geometry on. The one grayed out below under border vectors, because that's not the active layer, the one above star, you can clearly see the geometry on that has now been placed onto that sort of clear clear blank page denoting the fact that we definitely have geometry on this particular layer. Now with that 
I can select any of that geometry and I can find out a little bit more information about it. Now if I look down to the bottom right hand corner you can see not only does it show me the width and height extents of that vector but also the layer that is currently on. As you can see that displays a star. If I now select the border vector on the outside you can see this change to border vectors. So it's a quick way when you are displaying a lot of vector information on the screen you can quickly find out what layer an item is on by merely selecting it on the screen. So we're now going to discuss how we can help differentiate vectors and layers with the use of colors. So from within my layers tab, I'm going to come up to the star layer and change its color to be orange. Immediately in the 2D view, you can notice the star is updated to be orange and any subsequent geometry created on that layer will also be orange. So let's go down now to the drawing tab and create a new vector. In this case, it will be a circle center point of x0, y and 4 and have a diameter of 0.5. Immediately that shows as being orange because it's being created on the active layer star which happens to have an orange color set. Now what we're going to do is show how we can copy or move items onto new layers creating the layer at the same time. So I'm going to select the circle, right mouse key now and you have two options at the bottom here, move to layer and copy to layer. So copy to layer, we'll leave one copy here on the star layer and copy one across to the new layer or whatever we call it or move to layer, we'll just take this item and move it across to the layer. In this case I'm going to create a new layer this is going to be called circles. The color will be blue. I'm going to make it visible and active and OK. So now we have a new layer created. If I go back to my Layers tab, you can see that the Circles layer is both active and color blue. I'm now going to change my active layer from Circles to Star. I'm going to come back over and select the small circle that we've created. And we're going to look at some of the copying and pasting options. And now depending on which tool is used, will actually have a direct effect onto which layer the new item is placed. So I'm just now going to go into the transform mode now and you can see that I'm going to hold the control key down and just copy that item out. And the new item happens to be blue. So that has been created on the same original layer, circles, rather than the active layer, star. However, if I select the same circle now and go into my drawing mode and choose offset, I'm going to choose to go outwards by 0.5 and offset that outwards, you can see that the new vector is orange, denoting that it's actually been created on the active layer star. However, for other layout type functions such as the linear and circular array, all the new copies will be created on the existing original layer and not the active layer. So offset is the exception. So now we're going to take a look at grouping and ungrouping and how that works with multiple vectors on multiple layers. So firstly I'm going to select my three vectors. My current active layer happens to be star. I'm now going to right mouse key over one of those items and group those objects and immediately that group now is orange because the active layer is star so the, the group level is star for these items. Now if I now select those items again I can right mouse key and go down to ungroup and here I have a couple of different options. So to ungroup onto the original object layers or ungroup onto the group layer. Now the group layer happens to be star so if I select this option all those items will now be placed onto level star rather than their original layers. So I'm now going to just undo so I'm going to come back now and select the group again and right mouse key and choose the second of the two options which is to ungroup back onto original object layers. So I'm going to select that one and we can see now that two of the circles are on the circles layer and one of the circles is on the star layer. So I can move across now to my layers tab. You can instantly see all those circles is not active that there is information on that particular layer. And now I want to see how we go about deleting a layer and what we do with the vectors on that layer. So I'm going to right mouse key over the name and come down to delete and up will pop a form now saying that 
we know that there is data on that particular layer what would you like to do with it would you like to move it to another layer or delete it along with the layer itself so in this case I'm going to move it to layer star and not delete the data and OK that and now you can see those two smaller circles have been moved onto the star layer and my circle layer has been deleted before we take a look at working with imported data let's take a look at the remaining drop down menu options these can be accessed using the right mouse key over the text or similarly using the left mouse key over the icon to the right of the layer the first option is the ability to activate the layer following on from that we have two visibility based options under show we've got the four options show this means to switch this back on show only this which means obviously to switch all others off except for this particular layer show all the other items but this layer or to switch on all so similarly underneath that you've got hide for hiding this layer or hiding all layers quite a neat option that is often used when we're working with multiple vectors where we have the ish possible issue of accidentally selecting vectors is the ability to lock a layer I'm now going to lock the border vector. You can see that now from the left hand side there is a little padlock against the visibility and now if I box pick, so I'm just going to reach across now to pick some vectors, you can see that it did not pick the border vector. I'm unable to select it and it only selected the vectors that happen to be on the star layer. You can see here I'm trying to click on that vector and it will not allow me to pick it. I can unlock it by simply reselecting the menu icon on the right and select unlock and I'm now able to come back and pick that item. Similarly on that menu we've got the ability to insert new layer which will create a new layer above the item that we've just seen and the ability to delete that layer. And of course we have the ability to rename which we've done before and then the ability to merge visible okay now this is quite often used when we import data as we'll have some redundant layers that need to be merged with others so we'll come to this when we actually move on to importing some sample DXF data